there are applications where energy is temporarily stored in a rotating disk. And we call those disk flywheels. And the rotational kinetic energy can be consumed then at a later time. So it's very economical. And this rotational kinetic energy can then be perhaps converted into electricity or in other forms of energy. And there are really remarkably inventive and intriguing ideas on how this can be done. Of course, whether it is practical depends on, always on dollars and cents and to what extent it is economically feasible. But I have always, even when I was a small boy, I remember when I was seven years, it already occurred to me that all this heat that is produced when cars slam their brakes, all you're doing is you produce heat. You lose all that kinetic energy of your linear motion, whether somehow that couldn't be used in a more effective way. And this is what I want to discuss with you now and see where we stand. This is actually being taken seriously by the uh, Department of Energy. So I want to work out with you a, an example of a car which is in the mountains and which is going to go downhill and the mountains are very dangerous, zigzag roads, and so he can only go, he or she can only go very slowly, and then the, the maximum speed that the person could use is at most 10 miles per hour without killing him or herself, which is about 4 meters per second. And so here's your car. And let's assume you start out with zero speed, and let's assume that the mass of the car will give it nice numbers, is just 1,000 kilograms. And so you zigzag down this road. Uh, let us assume that the height difference, h, let's give it a number, 500 meters. And you arrive here at point p, and you later have to go back up again. What is your kinetic energy? when you reach point P. Well, you have a speed of four meters per second. And as you went down, you've been braking all the time. One way or another, you got rid of your speed. And that's all burned up, heat, you heat up the universe. So when you reach point P, your kinetic energy at that point P is simply one half m v squared. m is the mass of the car, so that is 500 times 16 v squared, so that is 8,000 joules. Now compare this with the work that gravity did in bringing this car down. That work is mgh. And mgh is a staggering number. A thousand times ten times five hundred. That is five million joules. And all of that was converted to heat using the brakes. It actually even gives you also wear and tear on the brakes. So who needs it? Is there perhaps a way that you can salvage it? Or maybe not all of it, maybe part of it. And the answer is, yes, there are ways. At least in principle there are ways. You can install a disk in your car, which I would call then a flywheel, and you can convert the gravitational potential energy, you can convert that to kinetic energy of rotation in your flywheel. And to show you that it is not completely absurd, I will put actually in some numbers. Suppose you had a, a disc in your car which had a radius of half a meter. That's not completely absurd. That's not beyond my imagination. That's, that's a sizable disc. And I give it a modest mass so that the mass of the car is not going to be too high. 200 kilograms, that's reasonable. That would be a steel plate only five centimeters thick, so that's quite reasonable. And the moment of inertia of this disk, if I rotate it about an axis through the center, perpendicular to the disk, that moment of inertia we know now is one-half m, oh, we have a capital M, r squared, and that equals 25. The units are kilograms, if you're interested, kilograms, meters squared. So we know the moment of inertia. Now what we would like to do is we would like to convert all this gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy of that disk. 
you think of a clever way that you can couple that, and people have succeeded in that, then you really would like one half i omega squared, you would really like that to be 5 times 10 to the 6 joules. And so that immediately tells you what omega should be for that disk, and you find then, if you put in your numbers, which is trivial, you find that omega is about 632 radians per second, so the frequency of the disk is 100 hertz, 100 revolutions per second. I don't think that that is particularly extravagant. So as you would come down the hill, you would not be braking by pushing on your brake, you would not be heating up your brakes, but you would somehow convert this energy into the rotating disk and that would slow you down. So the slowdown, the braking, quote unquote, is now done because of a conversion from your linear speed, which comes from gravitational potential energy, to the rotation of the disk. And when you need that energy, you tap it. So you should also be able to get the rotational kinetic energy out and convert that again into forward motion. And if you could really do this, then you could go back uphill and you wouldn't have to use any fuel. All your five million joules can be consumed then, in an ideal case, and you would not have to use any fuel. Now you can ask yourself the question, is this system only useful in the mountains or could you also use this in the city? Well, of course you can use it in the city. You wouldn't be braking like this then, which again, you would slow down by taking out kinetic energy of linear forward motion, dump that into kinetic energy of rotation of your flywheel, and that would slow you down. And when the light, the traffic light turns green, you convert it back, rotational kinetic energy, into linear kinetic energy, and you keep going again. Now, of course, this is all easier said than done, uh, but it is not complete fantasy. People have actually made some interesting studies, and I would like to show you at least one case that I'm aware of that I found on the web that shows you that the United States Energy Department is taking this quite seriously. This uh, view graph is also on the 801 homepage. And so you see here the idea of mounting such a flywheel under the car here. And it says the location of the flywheel energy management power plant. Wonderful word, isn't it? And here you see a close-up of this uh, flywheel. I didn't get any numbers on it. I don't know which fraction of the energy can be stored in your flywheel. But it's, a, it's an attempt. It's a, people are seriously thinking about it. And it may happen in the next decade that cars may come on the market whereby some of your energy, at least, can be, uh, can be salvaged. Instead of heating up the universe, use it yourself, which would be, could be very economical. I have here a toy car. I'll show it on TV first. And this toy car has a flywheel. Can you see it? That the flywheel itself is the wheel of the car. But the idea is there. In this case, I cannot convert linear motion into the flywheel. I could do that, but I'm going to do it in a reversed way. I'm going to give this flywheel a lot of kinetic energy of rotation. You'll see shortly how I do that. And then I will show you that that can be converted back into forward motion. In this case, very easy, because the flywheel itself is the wheel. So let me try to power this car. I do that with this plastic. Okay. So I'm going to put some energy into this wheel, into this flywheel. And then we'll see whether the car can use that to start moving. Great that my lecture notes were there. So you see, it works. And of course, if you could reverse that idea, that when the car, before it stops, get it back into the flywheel, then you have the idea that I was trying to get across. 
very economical and definitely that will happen sometime in the future.